Okay, welcome back. Um, we just have a little bit left to do. This is part two of the lecture on figure ground, which was kind of a continuation of the lecture on shape. And I just had a few things I wanted to cover. First thing it occurred to me was I went through that maybe a little bit fast, and perhaps there were some students who had never actually thought about what is a positive and a negative shape. So let's just cover that for a second. In an image, whatever you think of as the thing, let's say in this case, it is her, she is the prime object we're looking at, right? And that would include her and her hair and her dress and her, her, her jacket, right? All of her is a positive thing and therefore when we draw her, she is the positive shape. We see her as a shape coming forward. The space behind her is the negative shape, the shape that we see is the shape that is further back. One of the things that's interesting about this painting is the way because the negative space is painted in a much more active and a rich color, right? But also even like with more act, you know, more variation in the color, like all the, it's, it has this presence of wanting to come forward. So even though she is the positive, she feels in some ways like she's almost a cutout shape. She feels almost like the negative. So the balance between the positive and the negative is maybe a little bit off, but also a lot more interesting than uh, what we see in many paintings. That's one of the things that makes Alex Katz such an interesting painter. So hopefully everyone now understands what is a positive shape and what's a negative shape. Um, but really the point of this lecture is to get you to realize that it's all shape, right? The, the thinking of this image as being about a car, right, is the wrong way of thinking. It should be about is this shape and then these group or rather this grouping of shapes the grouping of shapes that makes the thing that is the car coming forward and this grouping of shapes that makes the space behind the car and it is a grouping of shapes we don't you know we think of it as all one coherent space but this is a different shape than that shape right because the shadow cuts off that shape and that's a different shape and the shape through the windows right all of those may feel like they're all part of that blank background space, but they are all different shapes. Okay. And so another thing I wanted to cover just a little bit more about was why graphic designers find thinking about positive and negative shape and figure ground is such a useful part of their, um, their field. And I think the reason is because when you think about figure ground, it means you're always thinking about design. You're always thinking about the relationships between things. Like if you think of this space as a shape in of itself, as well as this internal shape as a shape in of itself, then it makes you much more conscious as to whether how close this edge is going to get to there, or how close that edge is going to get to there, whether you want it to be right up to or not quite, right? So those decisions become much more thoughtful when you really are not thinking just in terms of the thing you're putting on but rather you're thinking of an interplay between the positive and negative shapes. Right. Um, I did want to just briefly talk a little bit about the beauty of this painting by Richard Diebenkorn. I love Richard Diebenkorn in general. I love a lot of his small uh, still life studies. And we'll probably look at this painting again when we're talking about painting, but it's just such a beautiful, gushy little painting and such a, but yet also such a fun play of abstract shapes that create a sense of a space and a set of a set of things. So one of my last points, this is like the second to last slide. Um, one of my last points is that when you think about positive and negative shape, what that means is that you're thinking about all the shapes and you're thinking about edge, right? You're really thinking about because it's so dependent on the edge, right? This what this shape is here and how interesting that shape is really depends on how she is cropped by the edge. If she's cropped a lot or a little or not at all, then that changes that shape. If she's not cropped at all, then all of a sudden this shape becomes part of a much larger shape. And so when you're thinking about positive and negative shape, you're also really thinking about the border and the edge of your picture plane. And that also makes you be a much more thoughtful and conscious designer or composer um, and in terms of creating a picture. Um, and we can see that kind of thinking in all of these, right? When we first look at a painting like this, we may not see it as being as designy 
as a photograph like this or as a painting like this but it is just as equally thoughtful about like that this beautiful line is not just only part of a shape that describes her but it's also part of a shape that describes this space right and that it was very consciously thought out that way so figure ground is everywhere it's a huge important part it's probably i think one of the most fundamental element or fundamental concepts in design right that um when you're teaching students how to design if you can if you can get them to start thinking about the relationship between positive and negative shapes all the time not just when they're doing a figure ground assignment but all the time if you can get them to think about that then you have really started to succeed in making them think about design right because it's it becomes about them thinking about how every composition is an organization of shapes and those shapes can be both positive and negative but the negative ones have a certain positive strength anyway right um, and then so hopefully through the rest of this course you'll really kind of see that every figure ground is plays out all the time um, but a lot of it has to do with how conscious the artist is, uh, how willing they are to um, to make up front the idea that they are working with shapes. The, right? the more that the, the illusion of space becomes the issue, sometimes it's harder for us to see that it is an organization of, of just a grouping of shapes, positive and negative, but that all shapes in a way have a positive value. Okay, that's the end. Uh, next, we will be talking about the, uh, the next impulse, which will be the narrative impulse, the desire to tell stories.